The top stories tonight and why news. President Rodrigo Duterte signs Bayanihan to recover as one or Bayanihan to act into law. The development of vaccine against COVID-19 has progressed since it began, but equitable access to it is facing challenges according to the World Health Organization. More than 200,000 Manila customers will experience water supply interruptions from September 17 to 19. Energy Regulatory Commission to hire external auditors and additional workers to audit Meralco refund after the refusal of the Commission on Audit. India records the world's highest number, daily number of cases with more than 96,000 today. Scientists develop soft artificial muscles to remotely mimic sense of touch. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Friday, September 11, 2020. I am Harleen Delgado. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the country and other parts of the world. I'm Angelo Castro III. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media accounts and our website, untvweb.com. I am William Theo. First in the news, President Rodrigo Duterte has signed Bayanihan to recover as one or Bayanihan to act into law. Executive Secretary Salvador Medialdea and Senator Christopher Bongo confirmed this. In August, Senate and the House of Representatives ratified the bill. Bayanihan 2 is the second stimulus package with an appropriated amount of 140 billion pesos and a standby fund of 25 billion pesos. The largest portion of the stimulus package is intended, intended to intensify the health sector of the country and provide additional benefits for healthcare workers and loans for sectors severely impacted by the coronavirus pandemic. The Health Department is set to issue the approved omnibus guidelines on the proper use of test kits and isolation of suspect and probable cases of COVID-19 in the country. Our health correspondent, Aiko Miguel, will tell us why. As a uniform response from the national government down to the local government units, there will be uniform omnibus guidelines for a more detailed policy on contact tracing, proper use of approved test kits and isolation of suspect and probable cases of COVID-19 in the country. According to Health Spokesperson Undersecretary Maria Rosario Vergere, it is set to be approved and issued by next week. So we found it rational naman din na isahan na lang para hindi iba-iba ang dokumento natin. And then uh, during that course of developing and consulting na i-recommend rin sa amin that there should be pathways, no? yung parang algorithms for each specific special population. Katulad ng locally stranded individuals, returning OFWs uh, or returning overseas Filipinos, uh, yung ating international and domestic tourists, our economy workers. The omnibus guidelines contain when and who should use the approved RT-PCR testing kits, rapid antibody testing kits, and antigen testing kits. So sabi nila dapat may separate na algorithm, maipakita namin kung anong test ang pwedeng gamitin sa kanila, paano yung proseso, how will they be isolated, and of course, how will they be managed, and when can they be allowed to travel. The health department also emphasizes the importance of having uniform guidelines that will be followed by LGUs for a faster and proper COVID-19 response. The DOH also clarifies there is no target yet when the revised home quarantine protocol will be implemented. According to the DOH, the recommendation of the National Task Force to no longer allow home quarantine is valid but would still be further studied. For now, home quarantine is still allowed especially for elderly people 
who would be in a difficult situation when put in an isolation facility. But according to the DOH, protocols should still be observed like having a separate room and comfort room. There should be no elderly or vulnerable individuals inside the house where a COVID-19 case is undergoing home quarantine. Uh, maaari naman niya na nababago no? based on evidences that we get every day. So, this recommendation was uh, put forth. no? And yesterday it was discussed in IATF. Although there were recommendations already na may mga specifics na kung sino ang pwedeng mag-home quarantine at sino yung dapat talaga sa temporary treatment and monitoring facilities which is actually existing naman talaga yan sa ngayon, di ba? Ay ko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Interagency Task Force Against COVID-19 approves antigen screening protocol for domestic air travel. Our, chorus, our Malacanang correspondent, Rosalie Cos, tells us why. With the efforts to intensify the battle against coronavirus disease 2019, the Interagency Task Force approves the use of antigen testing for domestic air travel. Rapid antigen tests are commonly used in the diagnosis of respiratory pathogens by testing samples collected through nasal swab. This is through Interagency Task Force Resolution No. 70 as recommended by the Department of Transportation. The IATF has initially approved the use of antigen tests as pre-boarding requirements for domestic travelers as well as upon entry to a place of destination if the conduct of a reverse transcription polymerase chain reaction or RT-PCR test is not possible. Ang paggamit ng antigen test bilang kapalit ng RT-PCR test ay pinamayagan sa kondisyon na unang ito ay una, pre-boarding requirement ng domestic tourist na asymptomatic bago umalis at magtungo sa kanilang travel destinations. Pangalawa, isang requirement bago makapasok sa place of destination kung saan ayon sa protocols ang lokal na pamahalaan. Provided na magsasagawa ng confirmatory antigen test tatlo hanggang limang araw pagkatapos. Meanwhile, Presidential Spokesperson Harry Roque tested negative for coronavirus after undergoing COVID-19 swab test. This week, the palace official went into isolation after a security aide tested positive for COVID-19. Secretary Roque is expected to return to the new executive building in Malacanang on Monday to conduct his regular press briefing. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Meanwhile, the country's Department of Health says that 4,040 new cases were reported today. That number raises the total confirmed cases of coronavirus infection in the Philippines to almost 253,000. The National Capital Region reported the most new cases with 1,813, followed by Cavite, which logged 435 fresh COVID-19 cases. Rizal, Bulacan, and Laguna are also in the top five provinces that reported the highest additional confirmed cases. The total active cases increased to 62,250. That's 24.6 percent of the total confirmed cases in the country. Of those active cases, 88.8 percent .8 are in mild condition, while 8.4 percent are asymptomatic. We have lost 42 more patients, bringing the death toll to 4,108, which is 1.6 percent of the total confirmed cases. But through our fervent prayers, medical interventions, and sacrifices of our medical frontliners, 566 more people have won their battle against the invisible enemy. That brings the total recoveries nationwide to 186,606. That's 73.8% of the total confirmed cases in the country. Thanks be to God. According to the DOH, the solidarity trial for potential COVID-19 vaccines may begin next month in the country. The health department's timeline may still change. Aiko Miguel tells us why. The health department has its timeline for the conduct of the World Health Organization solidarity trial in the country. According to Undersecretary Vergere, before September ends, there will be identification of vaccines to be included in the trials. By the end of September, the sites where trials will be determined. 
And the targeted commencement of the solidarity trials for vaccines is by the last week of October. However, the DOH says they are subject to change depending on several factors. The WHO will primarily determine those adjustments and changes. There are 34 vaccine candidates that will be tested for safety in the clinical studies. Nakapagkaroon na ng uh, meeting uh, with the sub-technical working group uh, for vaccine development kung saan nagbigay naman ng, ng mga updates ang WHO regarding this. No? Kasama nung team natin, mag-uumpisa kasi una sa isang pilot site tapos pagkatapos all the sites that were identified already isasama na. Also, according to the DOH, the government is continuously negotiating with different COVID-19 vaccine manufacturers. Yung Sinovac, Sinopharm, uh, ito ay um, yung kanilang confidentiality disclosure agreement. No, We have already um, transmitted it to them. So while we have not received the response yet, we cannot say anything about the negotiations first because of the CDA. So ante nating bumalik sa atin yun uh, with their comments or if, and then we can finalize it and then we can give information to the public. According to the DOH, there are no names for the potential vaccines because all of those are still being evaluated by the World Health Organization. The country's Department of Science and Technology on Thursday said that the government has identified eight zones for the solidarity trial. Six are in Metro Manila, one is in Calabar Zone, and another is in Cebu. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The development of a vaccine against COVID-19 has progressed since it began. But equitable access to it is facing challenges. Nina Armilio tells us why. During a regular media briefing on COVID-19 on Thursday, WHO Director General Dr. Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus reported the progress of the development of vaccine against coronavirus. He said, we have already made remarkable progress. Around 180 vaccines are now in development, including 35 that are in human trials. No disease in history has seen such rapid development in research. It's a testament to the incredible advances in science and technology the world has made in recent years. Dr. Tedros further said that currently, the Access to COVID-19 Tools or ACT Accelerator, which was launched in April, is supporting research into promising vaccines, therapeutics, and diagnostics. One therapeutic, dexamethasone, has been proven effective for patients with severe and critical condition. Others have been proven ineffective, and more are in trials. Clinical trials, manufacturing, licensing and regulation capacity must be scaled up so that these products can get to people and start saving lives, he said. But the ACT Accelerator is facing a challenge. The $2.7 billion it has received to date has been generous and has enabled the robust startup phase. But this is less than 10% of the overall needs. The ACT Accelerator still faces a funding gap of 35 billion US dollars. The WHO chief also reiterated that vaccine nationalism will hinder equitable access to vaccine. At the same time, bilateral vaccine deals and vaccine nationalism could compromise equitable access and hold up progress for all countries in bringing the COVID-19 pandemic to an end. An ACT Accelerator high-level event at the United Nations General Assembly will take place on September 30, 2020. Nina Armilio, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Let's now take a closer look at the updated count of coronavirus cases around the world. The COVID-19 pandemic has now reached a total of more than 28.1 million confirmed cases in 188 countries, regions and sovereignty. That's after over 250,000 patients were added to the statistics. The Americas remain as the region with the most confirmed cases, followed by Southeast Asia, 
which has so far reported more than 5 million. The fast-spreading disease has claimed almost 910,000 lives, while more than 19 million patients across the globe have recovered from the new coronavirus infection, thanks be to God. The Office of the Department of Environment and Natural Resources, or DENR, is open to whoever wants to look into the documents regarding the White Sand Project at Manila Bay. The DENR says it followed the right process for the project. Vincent Arboleda will tell us why. Several groups are questioning the Department of Environment and Natural Resources' action on dumping artificial white sand at the Manila Bay. Through the program Get It Straight with Daniel Razon, DNR Undersecretary Benny Antiporta, and Oceana Philippines Vice President Attorney Gloria Ramos faced off regarding the issue. Attorney Ramos alleged that the DNR did not follow the right process. I mentioned down na, so daw ito because I didn't hear it from USEC Antiporta, na meron silang certificate of non-coverage. We in this agreement, they didn't go through the process of consultation, thorough assessment of the impacts. But according to Yusik Antiporta, the Manila Bay Task Force gave them the go signal for the project. Uh, yung kompletong Manila Bay Task Force po ang nagbigay ng go signal dito sa ginawa namin. Can you provide them with the document that this is already this is something that has been approved by this task force, including all these agencies, uh, uh, Yusik Antiporta? Yes, of course. Pwede po namin ilabas yung mga minutes namin. Wala ko problema yan. On the other hand, Ramos said they had sent letters to the head of agencies involved in the Manila Bay Rehabilitation to know what was their participation in the project. Ramos added that DNR must not get upset if other parties want to get answers regarding the project. She further added they want to make sure that the laws on protection and conservation of nature are rightfully implemented to protect the country's resources. Meanwhile, Yusek Antipoda offered Oceana a spot in the Manila Bay Task Force should they want to participate in making ways to protect and rehabilitate Manila Bay. The issue is we're cleaning up Manila Bay. We're not killing the organisms. We're not killing the fishes. We're cleaning it up. And we have the proof, all the proof, videos, photos, and even documents that will prove that there's a very, very big uh, improvement. Vincent Arboleda, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. More than 200,000 Manila customers will experience water supply interruptions from September 17 to 19. One of our senior correspondents, Joan Nano, tells us why live. Yes, Joan. Arlene Water Service Provider Mainilad will temporarily shut down their water treatment plant in Putata and Muntinlupa City for maintenance and upgrade of the facility. According to Mainilad, this will be done within 33 hours or almost two days. Because of this, Arlene, thousands of Mainilad customers will experience water service interruptions. September 17 to 19. This will affect around 249,000 households in some parts of Las Piñas, Mutinlupa, Paranaque, and several portions of Cavite. Customers may check the complete list of schedules and areas affected by the water service interruption through Mainilad's Facebook and Twitter account. Mainilad adds it would still implement the window hours so customers may save water enough for their consumption during the water supply interruption. They will also provide Harleen 40 water tanks to serve affected residents. The water service provider advises the public to observe physical distancing during the water rationing to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Let us hear from uh, Sir Ronald Padua, Mainilad Water Supply Operations Head. Ina-assure lang namin na binigyan namin ng water supply window yung aming mga customers na maapektuhan. Meaning po, doon sa supply window na yon ay makakakuha po sila ng tubig para sa pangangailangan nila sa maghapon. And at the same time, kaya po ngayon pa lang ay nag-a-annunsyo na kami para po uh, magkaroon po ng pagkakataon yung mga customers namin na makapag-ipon. Meanwhile, Harleen, the National Water Resources Board has reduced the water allocation for Metro Manila as the water level in Angat Dam decreases. 
from the previous 48 cubic meter per second was reduced to 46 cms. With the reduction of water allocation, the NWRB assures the public that this is still enough to address the demand. Let us hear the statement of uh, Dr. Servilio David Jr., the Executive Director of the NWRB. Continuous yung decline no, ng level ng that dam. And uh, yung mga rainfall na supposedly padating, no, uh, inasan dumating yung July and August, ay hindi nakarate hindi ano no hindi uh, na realize no uh, based sa projection ng pag-asa so halos wala pa yata ang uh, kalahati Arlene, based on the latest update of Pag-asa, the water level in Angat Dam went down to 178.01 meters, which is almost 2 meters lower than its 180 meter minimum operating level. Arlene? Uh, Joan, how about Manila Water? Are Manila Water customers also expecting water service interruption in the coming days? Yes, Arlene, so far Manila Water has no advice for any schedule of water service interruption in the coming days. Arlene? Thank you so much, Joan Nano, for that report. Meanwhile, the Energy Regulatory Commission, or ERC, will continue with its plan to audit the refunds made by Meralco over the years. This was after the Commission on Audit, or COA, denied the ERC's request for assistance to conduct an audit and determine whether Meralco refunds have been fully returned or credited to its customers' accounts pursuant to various decisions of the ERC and the Supreme Supreme Court years back. This includes the uh, corporate income tax, meter deposit, and bill deposit that Meralco collected from its customers, which amounted to over 60 billion pesos. According to the ERC, based on Meralco's report to them, 27 billion pesos of the 30 billion peso income tax has been fully refunded, while 17 billion pesos from the collected bill deposits have yet to be refunded. However, COA says to determine and monitor the amount refunded by Meralco is still the ERC's responsibility. Gusto sana naming ma-verify ng isang third party kung ito nga talaga ay naibalik na at kung may natitira pa, maaari nating gawa ng uh, action kung saan dapat mapunta na maaari ibalik sa customer. Or kung hindi naman, yung general na nangyayari, ito ay ibabalik sa kaban ng bank. Despite this, ERC Commissioner Attorney Rex Ibaldo Digal says they understand COA's refusal. Now, the commission is looking at hiring additional workers to work on the audit. Maari na lang kaming mag-hire ng external auditor o kaya mag-hire kami ng mga additional na empleyado na tututok dito. Meralco has yet to issue a statement on the matter. Meanwhile, the ERC adds it is ready to defend the 19 million peso fine against Meralco due to the bill shocks it caused to its customers should Meralco appeal the ERC's decision. Meralco has earlier said that, they, that their legal team is still studying the ERC's order. Yun ay karapatan nila, hindi namin yun maaari sa kanila, pero kami naman ay handang uh, depensahan kung ano man ang magiging argumento nila laban doon sa aming naging desisyon. The Department of Transportation announced that starting September 14, they will impose reduced physical distancing on public transportation. But why did the DOTR decide to defer this measure? Joe Anano is back to tell us why. According to DOH spokesperson under Secretary Maria Rosario Vergere, the Health Department will still have to discuss the proposal with the Transportation Department. She said the discussion will include how to observe reduced distance without compromising the physical distance measures. The initial plan is that the current one-meter physical distancing policy will be lowered down to three-fourths of a meter for two weeks, and that will be further reduced to half a meter for another two weeks until it reaches 0.3 meters. With this, the number of passengers allowed on 
on a public utility vehicle at a one time will increase, meaning the occupancy on public transport will increase. On the other hand, former Special Advisor to the National Task Force Against COVID-19, Dr. Anthony Liachon, says there must be a study to back this proposal. He adds there must be reference models from other countries using this practice and results should be known. The Interagency Task Force will have to review the Transportation Department's proposal. John Nano, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Now, here's a glimpse of what's the weather like in parts of the country. A low pressure area or LPA is affecting parts of the country. State Weather Bureau Pagasa says as of 3 p.m. today, the LPA was located at 95 kilometers east northeast of Daet Camarines Norte. The LPA may dissipate once it nears landmass. However, its uh, cloud clusters will bring cloudy skies with scattered rain showers and thunderstorms over Bicol region, Calabarzon, and Mimaropa while Metro Manila and the rest of the country will experience partly cloudy to cloudy skies with isolated rain showers due to localized thunderstorms. Meanwhile, Pag-asa is monitoring a tropical depression outside the Philippine area of responsibility. As of 3 p.m., the weather system was located at 1,980 kilometers east of extreme northern Luzon with maximum sustained winds of 45 kilometers per hour near the center with gustiness of up to 55 kilometers per hour moving north-northwestward. According to Pag-asa, as of now, it is not expected to enter par. Authorities have identified the race of the suicide bombers that perpetrated the Holo Twin Blast in August. But the police cannot tell which nationality. Our police correspondent, Leah Ilagan, tells us why. The Philippine National Police confirms the two Asian suicide bombers perpetrated the twin blast in Barangay Walled City, Holo Sulu on August 24 that killed 15 individuals and left 74 others wounded. Special Investigation Task Group Holo Blast Spokesperson, Police Lieutenant Colonel Chris Conrad Gutierrez says, this is based on the result of the DNA test on the perpetrator's remains. According to the crime lab, to what they have analyzed the specimen of uh, alleged na two suicide bombers, both are Asian female. However, they could not determine the nationality. Kaya lang nung gamit nila is race. So it's either Asian, Caucasian, or European. Gutierrez also says that the two Asian suicide bombers were female but were not related to the perpetrators of the Hulo Cathedral blast in January 2019. They also uh, tested yung uh, blood relations ng recent bombing sa hulo and then yung sa cathedral bombers wherein yung result po is they did not match and they also could not determine the age nung dalawang female bomb is uh, suicide bombers Police Lieutenant Colonel Gutierrez adds improvised explosive device fuel oil or ANFO was used in the bombing determined din po ng ating uh, crime lab na ang composition po ng IED or ng improvised explosive device is yung ammonium nitrate fuel oil or ANFO and then yung type po niyan is yung pipe bomb. The official reveals they filed a case against 20 Abu Siyap members last September 4. He adds the tricycle driver who gave a ride to one of the female suicide bomber is now a person of interest and a subject of an ongoing investigation after he yielded to authorities. Philippine Army Chief Lieutenant General Cirilito Sobejana has earlier said the two suicide bombers were identified as Elias Nana, the wife of Filipino suicide bomber Norman Lasuka, and Elias Indanay, the wife of bomb expert Abu Talha or Talha Jumsa, who hailed from Sulo and then transferred to Tawi-Tawi. Lasuka was one of the perpetrators in the bombing in the Special Army Counter-Terrorism Camp in Indanan Sulu on June 28, 2019, 
wherein six persons were killed, including three soldiers. Abu Talha was killed in a military operation in November last year. The Philippine Army says Mundi Sawadjaan, a nephew of Hatib Hajan Sawadjaan, was the brain behind the twin blast in Hulo Sulu. Leia Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. U.S. Marine Joseph Scott Pemberton awaits further processing until his actual deportation. Dante Amento tells us why. At past 11 o'clock this morning, U.S. Marine Lance Corporal Joseph Scott Pemberton was formally turned over from the Bureau of Corrections to the custody of the Bureau of Immigration. But Pemberton remains inside the Joint U.S. Military Assistance Group or JUSMAG facility in Camp Aguinaldo until his actual deportation. Yes, sir, restricted din. Parang hindi, hindi naman siya preman kung titingnan eh. Kasi nag-deportation siya, hindi yan. Bureau of Immigration Acting Spokesperson Melvin Mabulak adds that after the turnover, the Bureau of Immigration Legal Division immediately started processing Pemberton's summary deportation order. Yes, kasi kung turkasi kasi sa implementation ng deportation order, stipulated kasi doon kung ano ang flight na pasakyan, anong araw aalas, at anong travel document na aalas. Pero specific na yun eh, sa implementation ng summary deportation order. Pemberton's biometrics data were taken for his NBI clearance. He is also waiting for the result of his COVID-19 swab test. Meanwhile, the U.S. Embassy is expected to submit Pemberton's travel documents, including his passport and itinerary or plane ticket if he will be boarding a commercial flight. Justice Secretary Binardo Guevara, on the other hand, says there is no exact date yet for Pemberton's actual departure from the country because it would depend on his flight arrangements. On September 16, 2015, the Immigration Board of Commissioners released a summary deportation order against Pemberton, but it was not implemented after the Olongapo local court released a hold departure order for Pemberton over the killing of transwoman Jennifer Laude. Dante Amento, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Face-to-face -face visitation in BJMP facilities are temporarily prohibited. Ashur Kadapan Jr. will tell us why. Out of 470 jail facilities across the country, 21 have recorded COVID-19 cases according to the Bureau of Jail Management and Penology or BJMP. A total of 1,151 persons deprived of liberty or PDLs have tested positive for COVID-19. There are only 175 active cases as 918 have already recovered while 15 succumbed to the deadly virus. Because of this, the BJMP strictly implements the health and safety protocols set by the Department of Health to avoid the further spread of the disease. Those include the suspension of face-to-face -face visitation, but the PDL's relatives are encouraged to use online visitation as this helps PDL's psychologically. According to BJMP spokesperson Jail Chief Inspector Xavier Solda, PDLs with COVID-19, even those who are experiencing symptoms of the disease, are isolated immediately. While severe cases are brought to hospitals for appropriate treatment upon the court's consent. Kapag po ang pasyente no, ay nagmanifest pa lang ng COVID-19-like symptoms, ina-isolate na po natin yan. Ang mabuti pong ginagawa ng ating mga jail facilities, meron po tayong health monitoring sa lahat po ng mga PDL natin. The BJMP is also resolving congestion in jail facilities as this poses high risk for COVID-19 transmission. About 1,500 PDLs vulnerable to the disease, particularly the elderly, those with medical conditions, and pregnant women have been released from BJMP after tapping the court for the resolution of their cases. More jail facilities have also been constructed through a 7 billion peso budget allotted in the last three years. Ang ginagawa po ng BJMP hindi lamang siya basta nagtatayo ng mga jail facilities sa mga probinsya o lugar na kung saan uh, merong kailangan itayo ng mga jail facilities. Tinitingnan natin ano po ba yung pinaka-congested. Doon po ang inuuna natin ang mapagtayuan. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God.
And for the news abroad, here's Mariella Toza reporting live from Perth, Australia. William, after almost 13 years of service in the airline industry, Tiger Air Australia has officially shut down after its parent company Virgin Airline was pushed to the verge of collapse due to COVID-19 pressures. In 2013, Virgin Australia bought the 60% share of Tiger Airways for 35 million Australian dollars and in the following year, the remaining 40% has also been bought. In August this year, Virgin Australia announced the discontinuity of the Tiger Air brand due to insufficient customer demand to keep up with both of the carriers at the time. Nevertheless, Tiger Air would still keep its air operator certificate in case a revival opportunity occurs in the future. Travel credits with Tiger Air Australia will be converted into future flight credits under Virgin Australia, which is anticipated to be available from September 23 this year. Credits from these are allowed to use for booking flights until July 23, 2022, with a travel validity of until June 30, 2023. Tiger Air Australia said on their farewell message that since their very first flight on November 23, 2007 from Melbourne to Gold Coast, they have provided affordable air travel to more than 30 million customers across Australia and through the commitment of their people, past and present, created a family of 1.2 million along the way. The world's first floating Apple store opened yesterday in Singapore. It's the third Apple store in the country and residents and guests can now come and visit the latest icon of the city state. But visitors are still expected to comply with health protocols. Joining us tonight is one of our correspondents in Singapore, Annie Mancilia, to tell us why live. Annie. Marielle, hailed as Apple's most ambitious retail project, the Apple Marina Bay Sands opened on September 10 to Singapore's public. The latest icon in the city-state is the world's first floating Apple store installed in the country which offers attractions to public during this pandemic. For everyone's enjoyment, the 148-person team at Apple Marina Bay Sands collectively speaks 23 languages for their visitors. Apple highlighted seven areas highly recommended to their guests, including a glass dome which offers a 360 view of the city skyline. Its escalators are clad in mirror polished stainless steel which take visitors from the basement to the dome. A first for any Apple store around the world. Here, Apple's first underwater boardroom located at the lower level of the store can be found. It is dedicated space for entrepreneurs, developers, and other small and medium business customers. A bonus tip is to visit the store before 6 p.m. to enjoy the sunset while walking at the boardwalk to see the entire floating store. And to comply with the country's ongoing safety protocols, the store implements health measures for both employees and visitors. Wearing a face mask is a requirement. Contactless temperature check is implemented, meaning the thermometer does not touch the skin to ensure that it measures below 37.5 degrees Celsius and no data from this procedure will be recorded. And physical distancing must be observed. Stores also ensure that enhanced deep cleaning of surfaces in the stores and the displayed products. Marielle? Annie, is there a limit in the number of guests accommodated at one time? Marielle, this Marina Bay store observes safety measures against COVID-19, thus limiting the number of guests per day starting from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. To visit this third Apple store installation in Singapore, it is highly recommended to individually book online to avoid waiting in queues. Since this is a new store for now, there will be many viewers, thus waiting in line might take longer. They can book at Apple's official website, all those stores can accept walk-ins who might need to wait for some time as there is a limit to store occupancy. Thank you, Annie Mancilia, for that report.
TikTok owner Biden says it plans to invest billions of dollars and recruit hundreds of employees in Singapore. The video sharing app TikTok is planning to make Singapore its beachhead for the rest of Asia as part of its global expansion, according to people familiar with the matter. The company is looking to spend several billion dollars and add hundreds of jobs over the next three years in the city-state. The investment would come at a crucial time as a technology firm is forced to sell TikTok operations in the U.S. under pressure by the Trump administration. Meanwhile, France is planning tougher measures to combat coronavirus after experiencing a record number of daily cases. Thursday's figures showed the country registered 10,000 new cases in a 24-hour period, a key meeting between ministers and health experts to decide on new measures is happening today. French President Emmanuel Macron said the meeting would give the public a clear idea of what can be expected in the coming weeks. As of today, France has the seventh highest COVID-19 death toll in the world. More than 30,800 people in France have died from coronavirus. Let's now take a closer look at the updated count of coronavirus cases in countries worst hit by the pandemic. The United States of America now has almost 6.4 million confirmed COVID-19 cases, still with the highest death toll with close to 192,000. Today, India recorded the world's highest ever daily number of cases, with more than 96,000. Its health ministry has now reported more than 4.5 million cases out of the country's 1.353 billion population. Data shows that the amount of cases is rising faster in India than anywhere else in the planet. But the death rate is, or is lower than some countries. The current death toll in India sits at more than 76,000, the world's third highest behind the U.S. and Brazil. And those are the reasons behind the news here in Australia and in other parts of the globe. Back to you, William. Thank you, Maria Latosa, reporting live from Perth, Australia. A team of scientists develop a device they call a skin stretch haptic device that can mimic the sense of touch. The special device can be integrated into textiles that can be potentially used in medical, industrial and entertainment applications. Jovic Bermas tells us why. A virtual environment allows us to see and hear objects as they are easy to reproduce. However, feeling these objects as if we are directly touching them is quite a big challenge. In just a few years from now, the idea of touching a loved one during a video call could soon become a reality. Thanks to the new haptic device invented by engineers from the University of New South Wales in Sydney that can recreate the sense of touch. This new haptic technology featured in the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers Access Journal can mimic the experience of touch of a hand similar to what is felt in the real world through force, vibration, or motion. Dr. Than Nyo Do, Shensha Lecturer and UNSW Medical Robotics Lab Director, said the three-way directional skin stretch device or SSD built into the fingertips of the wearable haptic glove is like wearing a second skin. It is soft, stretchable, and mimics the sense of touch and will enable new forms of haptic communication to enhance everyday activities. A new method to recreate an effective haptic sensation via soft miniature artificial muscles was introduced by Dr. Do's team and has applied for its patent. This soft wearable haptic glove with 3D force sensors generates sufficient normal and shear forces to the user's fingertips via a soft tactor, enabling them to effectively reproduce the same sense of touch to the other end remotely. 
Dr. Do adds, this special device is scalable and can be integrated into textiles that can be potentially used in medical, industrial, and entertainment applications. With enough funding and successful user tests, the team hopes this new technology to become commercially available in the next 18 months to 3 years. Jovic Burma's UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. Those are the reasons behind the news, September 11, 2020. I am Horlin Delgado. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold. I'm Angelo Castro III. Because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am William Theo. We serve the people. We give glory to God. 